Welcome to the Monday Thursday worship service with the people of Towson United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mark Johnson. This is Pastor Christine Kumar, and together we will be leading you in this time together. Monday Thursday. Here we are. Many people will ask, what exactly does Monday mean? It comes from a, a Latin word which means new and refers to the scripture from John 13, 34, in which Jesus tells his disciples, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. So that new commandment celebrated on Monday, New Thursday, is love one another. Different churches will celebrate Monday, Thursday worship with uh, a, a variety of things. I know sometimes here at Towson, we have had a, a modified Seder meal, uh, communion, foot washing. There's lots of things that can be done. We are going to focus on communion and foot washing tonight. Of course, those things are difficult to do virtually, and so we're actually going to be doing hand washing rather than foot washing. And I pray that we will soon be able to return to person-to-person -person worship, especially for times like these. And now, let us prepare for worship. The New Testament, the Old Testament the lesson is from Psalm 116, verses 1 through 2, 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In a traditional Monday, Thursday service, the congregation and the worship leaders uh, would share in a prayer of confession and pardon. Usually the prayer of confession is a, a, a unison reading of all of the congregation, and then it's followed by a prayer of pardon from the pastor. And then the people uh, repeat that blessing to the pastor. 
Uh, now I will be reading the part of the congregation and uh, the congregation will reply. Pastor Christine will do uh, the, uh, the blessing, the pardon. Uh, so hear this as an interplay of congregation and worship leadership. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ. Where we have failed to love one another as Christ loves us. Where we have pledged loyalty to Christ with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray. And by your spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And as the people of Christ, we reply, in the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body that is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so with these words of the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth, we move into this time of Holy Communion. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and evermore to give thanks to you, Almighty God creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness, gave us grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When we turned aside from your way, and abused your gifts. You gave us in him your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat this is my body which is given for you 
do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, this bread, this wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by Christ's blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again and together we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ given for you. Our gospel lesson is taken from John chapter 13, verses 1 
through 17, and 31b through 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in his heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table and said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Verily, truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. But this everyone will know, that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. In Jesus' day, if you were invited to someone's home for a meal, you would no doubt put on your, your finest apparel and then, and then walk uh, to that person's door. And when you got there, uh, probably you'd still all be looking good, but your feet in your sandals uh, from the walk would be a mess. And so a common way of showing hospitality was for one of the servants of the household to, uh, uh, to invite you to sit down and then they would wash your feet. And uh, it, in that way, you would not only receive hospitality, but you would also um, be freshened for the, the, the meal and, and the celebration. Now, 
Note that I said it was a servant who would do the foot washing, normally the very lowliest of servants, because washing someone's feet um, was a pretty lowly activity. And so how was it that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, God's only son, washed the feet of his disciples? How he showed that he humbled himself, made of himself a servant, and expressed that love for one another. And it is that model of servant leadership, of self-giving love, that this new commandment to love one another is pointing to. And it is that essence, it is that spirit, that, that teaching that we remember on this Monday, Thursday. I would invite you, if you are with others um, sharing this worship time, to wash each other's hands or feet if you, if you wish. And as you have done this act of love for each other, repeat, as our Lord humbled himself in service to others, go and serve others in love. Pastor Christine, may I wash your hands? Surely, Pastor Mark. Pastor Christine, as our Lord humbled himself in service to others, go and serve others. Amen. Amen. Even an Advent colored towel here. And so we have communed together. We have washed hands together. And now we prepare ourselves as we move from this worship of Monday, Thursday to a much darker time on Good Friday. And I hope that you will participate in our self-guided reflective time uh, at the church between 12 and 6.30, between noon and, and 6.30 p.m. on Good Friday um, to prepare your hearts and minds for this difficult, difficult day, this Friday that we have the audacity to call good. Pastor Christine, will you lead us in prayer? Surely. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for teaching us by your example in your son, Jesus Christ. As he washed his disciples' feet that day, Lord, you have showed us that not one is greater than the other, that we are all called to be servant leaders in this world. And Lord, you have also commanded us to love one another as you love us. So help us to carry this love that you give to us. Help us to carry it to everyone that we meet in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so my sisters and brothers, tonight we have shared in the sacrament of Holy Communion remembering Christ's offering for us and our unity in Christ. And we have also celebrated this ritual of, of foot washing, hand washing, if you will. And so I invite you to go forth as Christ's humble servant and serve others in love. We pray these things in the name of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.